Hey there! Thank you for tuning into Duck Bricks. I'm Chris, and today we have a very special video. So today is September 7th, 2021, and exactly one year ago today, we published our first video for the Duck Bricks channel, which means it has been one year since I first launched the Duck Bricks channel. We have done a ton of stuff since then, and I wanted to take this opportunity to both thank everyone who's been there either from the start, or maybe this is even just your first video. If you've been following the channel for a while or you're a new viewer, thank you so much for checking this out, and I'm really happy I get the chance to share my love and passion for LEGO with all of you. And with that, I have a very special video prepared today. I wanted to showcase my entire LEGO collection for the first time a full tour of every single thing you can see in my collection. So this is going to be a long video, so let's buckle up and start to take a look right now. Alright, here we are at the entrance to the LEGO collection. Let's come on down and take a look. First up on the sides of the walls here we have some of the collectible minifigures from Series 1 all the way to the current series down here. You can see the first one starting on this row here. We go all the way down to Series 9, 10 picks up right here, and we keep on going down. Since I've done these larger frames for the earlier collectible minifigures, I've also tried to include some of the later series in their own smaller segments to really highlight these series as their own groups. I've also tried to actually have the right colors of the packaging around them as well, so that kind of adds to the whole thematic aspect of the collectible minifigures being shown here. Of course, not all of these are standard collectible minifig series. For instance, we have the Looney Tunes one here, Simpsons up here, Mario series 1 and 2 here with 3, the construction of that display is still being built, and some of the exclusive sports things here. Now these are particularly interesting because the first couple of stuff here only came out in 2012 for the London Olympics, and the bottom rows here were only actually released in Germany for their soccer team. Coming on down here, we have some other exclusive collectible minifigure series like the short-lived Unikitty series right here. Got the Disney series right there, and that about sums up all of the different collectible minifigures in this entire display. And if you're wondering where stuff like, say, the Ninjago collectible series are, or stuff like the DC or Marvel series, well, I've actually put those with their respective themed building plates on the sides here, so I've kind of combined the series with the regular figures. But speaking of Ninjago, right here we have a large display for Ninjago. This is basically every single Ninjago minifigure that's ever been released, including all of the different special, unique variants over time. I have updated it for the most recent, at the time of this recording, minifigures like Seabound right here. We've got some of the Seabound villains down at the bottom here, and each of the ninja are featuring some of their most accurate and up-to-date outfits for the TV series. Moving on to the side over here, we've got every single Monkey Kid minifigure released so far. This display has actually been updated for the latest wave of Monkey Kid featuring the Bone Demon right here. I actually ordered another copy off of Bricks and Pieces to display it in two different forms, one with the skirt piece and one with the ghost piece here, as well as some of the other many characters from the entire franchise. Going on up here, we have some more classic stuff. So here is a display of basically all of the different classic space figures or the original LEGO space themes. You've got some of our early stuff at the top here. Moving on to some of the later years of classic space, ton of life on Mars aliens. And later on, we go to the more modern stuff like Space Police as well as Alien Conquest. And finally ending with Galaxy Squad and some of the most recent unique space stuff, which is actually from LEGO City, which you can see here. Now over here we have some of the minifigures from the action and adventure themes. These here are from Alpha Team, up at the top, then we go on to Agents, and I've also incorporated some other stuff like Exoforce as a row down here, and finally some of the action adventure dinosaur themes, which had minifigures of their own. Moving on to the bottom right here, we have some more vintage LEGO stuff, so all of the original LEGO castle themes, although at some point I do need to expand this display to include the new Black Falcon minifigures, which I actually have in a separate army of their own. Going on up here, some more original LEGO themes, like the classic Adventurers Johnny Thunder theme. I really love the fact that they're referencing this in collectible minifigures, like this one right here. And then we go on to some underwater and underground themes, which you can see in the figures on these rows in particular. But taking a step back here, we can take a look at some of the first licensed themes in this display. Besides Avatar The Last Airbender, which I personally wasn't the biggest fan of the figures, but I do love that TV show, so I had to have a separate display for them. 
Of course, the larger license display up here are all of the Marvel minifigures. Now, at the time of this recording, some of the Marvel sets for this year have not been released yet, such as the Eternals, which is why there's a large empty gap for all of the new characters coming out in those sets. I think they're actually officially releasing November 1st, so hopefully sometime around then I'll be able to add this to the display, was just trying to kind of plan ahead there. But you can see I've actually gotten all the different Marvel figures even have a display all the way up here as well for some of the villains, mostly stuff from the comics down here, as well as the MCU movies and films up here. Although I've combined comics and MCU if they are the same character. Now up there we have a display for LEGO Video. This is just the first wave because the second series of minifigures hasn't been released and honestly at this point I don't even know if it will be released because the theme has been cancelled after just barely half a year on shelves. Moving on to here, we have a large Star Wars display. This basically dominates this entire section of the wall, continues all the way down to here. Now I've tried to group these into different categories, like we have the clone and stormtrooper type characters up here. Obviously the newest stuff isn't on there yet. I'm still in the process of building stuff like the Bad Batch shuttle. So this is just stuff that's been released up to around last year. Some more spillover stuff for the First Order right here. I tried to keep those pretty separate from the Imperial and Republic stuff. And then moving on down here, we have all of the different Jedi minifigures. Obviously, I'm missing a few different variants here. I'll fill them in as I start to collect the figures, but that's why there's some gaps. It's just some different variants of, say, Obi-Wan that are missing here. But for the most part, it's pretty complete. And I have tried to get all of the different unique characters, even continuing down to here, which is just purely made up of different variations of Luke Skywalker and Rey, you can see on the bottom right here. So he has a ton of minifigures just to him. One of the most interesting things I just recently got was the LEGO employee exclusive Christmas X-Wing, which includes another version of Santa Yoda, which I never actually thought I would own, so I'll have to fit him in there somehow. Moving on, we have another short-lived theme with some fantastic minifigures. This is the LEGO Overwatch theme, which is a pretty unique license for LEGO to do, but it's really interesting seeing them on display right here. And then coming on down, we have a large display dedicated to the cinematic LEGO movies. From the LEGO Movie 1 to the LEGO Movie 2, this is basically every single figure from those movies, including all the collectible minifigures mixed within. So they actually did have multiple different collectible minifigure series for both of these movies. And I've tried to mix them in because some of the characters are just the same and wanted to really showcase the different versions of each character all at once as we move down the board here. Moving on to the top once we get past all of this, you can see some of the other Rebel and Resistance themed LEGO minifigures. Now actually some of the rarest figures in my Star Wars collection are on this board, including the X-Wing Christmas Pilot minifigure, which retails for around $300 to $400 for just this figure alone, which is one of the rarest figures in my Star Wars collection. Moving on to down here, we have some more Star Wars figures here, some mostly resistance covered stuff, basically continuing from that other display up above. And over here, we have some of the villains. So we've got some Sith and dark side force users up here, as well as just some of the standard villain armies, like first the droids from the Confederacy of Independent Systems. And then we have some of the Imperial officers here. And you can see there are very, very many of them. Just a few of them actually are missing here. Hopefully at least one day I'll be able to own them all, but this is pretty much almost 100% complete. We even have some First Order officers in their own display up here, just because I couldn't fit them all on one panel. Moving on down here, we have a look at some of the bounty hunters and other Mandalorian characters from the Star Wars universe. You can see specifically here, it's a focus on Jango, then Boba Fett, and then even using the prototype Boba Fett figures, and then moving on down to the actual Mandalorian TV show, as well as just some other bounty hunters and scum and villainy across the universe in this display. And speaking of, we've got some more bounty hunters and other kind of underbelly residents of the Star Wars universe on the second half of this display right here, as well as just a ton of different droids from Astromex 2 Protocol droids all lined up in a row. This is basically everything that LEGO has done, with a few gaps missing here and there, but again, hopefully, maybe someday I'll own them all. Before we move on from this side of the minifigure displays, we have a section dedicated to spooky LEGO themes. These are all of the hidden side minifigures, as well as the Monster Fighters figures up at the top. One of the things I really like are some unique designs, like the Harbinger right here. Very unique design for a LEGO character, and something that really stands out on a shelf. 
One thing I forgot to mention while we were over in this section is that there's a massive wall panel dedicated to the LEGO Lord of the Rings and Hobbit minifigures. This was a pretty short-lived theme that just came out when the Hobbit movies were releasing, and honestly, I really wish that LEGO will revisit it somehow, someday, maybe with the new Amazon Lord of the Rings TV show because I feel like there was so much they could have done with this theme, and it feels like a big missed opportunity to just leave it at this. But as you can see here, the minifigures are pretty fantastic and really detailed for their time, which is why they deserve a spot in the minifigure collection. Alright, but backing up here, it's time to look at the other side of the wall over here. Now I've actually covered these in great detail in a separate video, so definitely go check that out in the description if you want to take a look. But over here we have the 100% complete Bionicle Kanohi mask and face, helmet, armor, you name it. If it belongs on the face of a Bionicle, it is here. One of the rarest masks in this collection is the Pearl Gold Kanohi Krakon, which was only released in a limited production run when LEGO changed their color of gold from flat dark gold to pearl gold sometime in 2006. This is really hard to come by and I was lucky enough to get it added to my collection when a fan of the channel reached out and offered to sell it to me after I mentioned I was still missing that in a previous video. Of course, as we move up to here, even all of the rarest misprint masks are included, including some of these very special different colorations of the Kanohi Cow Cow or Mask of Water Breathing, as well as each of the strangely colored variations of some of the Taraga masks, which are actually factory misprints and strange colors that never appeared in any set whatsoever. Of course, the Bionicle masks continue all the way up here. You can see the years go on, including some custom chromed Generation 2 Bionicle masks right here, which are meant to represent the solid gold masks, which were actually introduced when Bionicle G2 was announced. Obviously, I do not own the actual solid gold ones, so I figured getting some chromed ones would do the trick just fine for my display. Now moving on down here and continuing with the Bionicle theme, you may notice some other Bionicle mosaics. Most of these Bionicle mosaics are fully custom. Some of them have actually been created by official LEGO designers, like the very special Kanohi mask displays right here. All these mosaics were actually designed by an official LEGO designer using the Marilyn Monroe LEGO mosaic set. But then moving on as we get down here, we have some more custom LEGO Bionicle art mosaics. I've devoted a ton of videos to these, but if you do want to check them out, we've got stuff like the Island of Mata Nui here, the Kanohi Hao with a Krana on the other side, which is a very unique symbol for 2002, as well as all six Toa laid out together, and the massive Mata Nui robot under the control of Makuta Teradax, which is kind of meant to represent the 2010 conclusion to the storyline. Let's come on down here and flip around so we can take a look at some of the minifigures on the other side of this wall. So going around here, we have yet more minifigure displays on this side of the wall. Now I've actually tried to focus this on some more original LEGO themes. So we've got all of the Nexo Knights figures here. Say what you will about the theme, but I think it had some really cool and unique looking figures, which you can see all along this panel here. And even moving on, we have some of the more unique LEGO Chima figures, which were also fantastically detailed, especially for their time. Moving on, we have the DC figures. I have a whole panel for villains here and a whole panel for heroes on the other side, featuring basically every single one that's ever been created with some gaps here and there if I'm missing it. And lastly, I have compiled all of the minifigures from the LEGO Harry Potter reboot series, which actually released around 2018. I do probably own most of the figures from the older lines of Harry Potter, but to be honest, I'm not the biggest fan of the older design of the figures, and I think they just simply look a lot better in this newer design. Now at some point, I will have to refactor this display because it's already basically full and I have a ton of extras on the top that still need a home. So these are kind of just temporary for now. I even have up here some of the Fantastic Beast characters because they really do kind of stand on their own. Moving on from that though, let's come on down into the main LEGO collection. You'll start to notice some of the first ships hanging mounted above me here. I've tried to display all the different years of classic space sub-themes. You can see up here we've got a ton of the original classic spaceships, including one neo-classic spaceship, which is a custom design by the Brick Artisan. You can actually purchase instructions for it, which I found to be a really great build. But everything else here is basically an actual LEGO set. 
And this continues on down to the next sub-theme of classic space or classic space styled stuff, which is Futuron. All the way up here, I love that striking white, black, and transparent blue color scheme. And I also love that they reused the color scheme for LEGO Space Police 3. So I've actually grouped them all together, which you can see on some of the ships up here, almost as if they're all part of one fleet. Moving on down from those though, let's now take a look at what we've got all the way over here. These are basically every single LEGO Batman related vehicle, whether it be a Batmobile, a boat, a bat plane or whatever, you name it, it's all here going all the way up. Let's get some of this stuff out of the way so we can really see this over here. It's just basically every single one mounted to the wall. If you're actually interested in learning how to mount Lego stuff to the wall, I have made a video tutorial on that, and the link is in the description below if you do want to check that out. Over here, you can see them evolve over the many years, including some of the largest Batman vehicles. Now, we actually are getting a new version of the UCS scaled tumbler this fall, so I'm very excited for that. And we'll have to start making space on my wall because I'm not sure exactly where I'm going to be putting something that's basically this size. I even mounted the Lego Batwing right here, which actually just released. It was really great because it literally included a wall mount for the actual build, so that made mounting it very, very easy. Moving on to here, these are every single Lego Millennium Falcon ever released that's either minifigure play scale or ultimate collector series scale. This first one right here is the original Ultimate Collector Series Millennium Falcon from 2007. Funnily enough, I actually got this one after I got the one above it, which is the new version, the 2018 Ultimate Collector Series Millennium Falcon. Both of them mounted on a very interesting kind of string and pulley system. And then going all the way up here, you can see it started off with the original one from 2000 using those large UFO pieces. And then they slowly refined the design all the way down throughout the years until we hit the latest design right here, which is featured in the Rise of Skywalker, where they finally actually fixed the gaps in the circular portion of it, making this basically the perfect minifigure scale version of the model. Rotating around here, if we come onto this side of the wall, you'll notice that I've actually got a ton of more unique kind of Lego stuff on this shelf tucked away here. So on the top there, I've tried to manage to fit in a lot of different Star Wars walkers. You can see the sand crawlers up there, as well as the many copies I got of the 501st Clone Trooper Battle Pack on all the ATSTs and whatnot. On the second layer, you have all the ATTEs, including the custom one from Brick Vault, which I'll say was a fantastic build, but definitely not the most stable of builds either. Moving on down here, I kind of have a section devoted to unique LEGO exclusives featuring stuff like the Yoda's lightsaber build, which is a pretty rare free gift with purchase, as well as one of my favorite rarest free gift with purchases, which is this model right here. They actually only gave this out on the opening day or the opening weekend of the Fifth Avenue Lego store in New York. And it features this custom print that literally says Fifth Avenue 2021. Very grateful for one of my friends who arranged for it to be gotten. And this is a really cool special commemorative souvenir from that particular Lego store, which actually at the time of this recording, I've not even been to yet. You can even see some more stuff here, like the dinosaurs from the Lego house. These are some of the Lego house in Bill and Denmark exclusive sets. And thankfully they sold these for retail to people living in the UK last year, which was how I was actually able to get some of these. And then finally moving on down here, we have a Harry Potter focus. So this is basically everything that isn't Hogwarts besides the newest Hogwarts stuff, which I've kind of stuck in here. So if you really try to look in the back there, you can see the full Diagon Alley set in the back, right above the heads of the larger figures. You can see it stretch all the way through the back there. And it just includes a ton of more unique Harry Potter stuff, which does also continue down to this next shelf right here, where you can see both iterations of the burrow just barely stacked hiding behind each other. This shelf also has a focus on some of the more unique LEGO original themes, such as Adventures right here, one of my favorite Adventures playsets, plus the Temple of the... Uh, plus the Portal to Atlantis set from LEGO Atlantis. 
Now this shelf right here features a lot of the land-based Star Wars vehicles. These ones are basically just the ones that are not worthy to hang from the ceiling because they're either low to the ground speeders or literally meant to be on land. I've just tried to include them here and you can see they're kind of dominated by just so many versions of the 501st speeder. I was a big fan of that battle pack when it came out so I had to get a ton of them for myself. Besides some more miscellaneous Star Wars stuff right here, mostly just featuring some landmarks from Star Wars, like the Snoke throne room. We've got this Scarif battle here, Death Star duel, another Death Star duel, Palpatine's office, which is a great set, by the way, as well as just some other miscellaneous things in, in dual spaces right there. We can probably now move on to some more stuff here. It's kind of a continuation of the land-based Star Wars models, like the Wrath Tar Escape, Luke's hut here, plus just some kind of random stuff scattered around, like even a Chima set, and even just some regular creator houses and whatnot that really didn't have a specific place elsewhere in my display, which is why they've kind of been put over here. Moving on from the bottom two shelves, which are basically just some other random LEGO stuff, the last thing I have to mention about this space is the display for some of the LEGO Ninjago mechs. Now these are basically all of the hero-themed LEGO Ninjago mechs, including the Ninjago movie stuff. Some of them I have personally modified. You can see the Quake mech up here, one of my favorite official and unique LEGO sets. And then down here, you can see the Fire mech, which I've actually modified quite a bit to make it actually have knee joints and a little bit more accurate to the movie. Going on down, we can see some of the evolution of LEGO Ninjago mechs over time, from Lloyd mechs over here to some coal stuff, and all the way going down, we even have two different versions of the same mech, which is Zane's, but just different years apart. This one was released in 2015, and this one came out just this year in 2021. They're representing the same exact build, but it's really cool to see just how much LEGO has evolved in the span of around six years. The same can be said for these mechs here. They're supposed to represent the same build, and the same one for these two, although that's a Junior's one, so it doesn't really count. Lastly, I've actually bought two versions of the Lloyd's Hydro Mech, one of them to keep in the standard set form, and one to modify it to make it a little bit more show accurate and allow some more articulation, like knees, a more accurate claw, a fully enclosed cockpit, and some other fun details for actually matching how it appears in the TV show. Now this one actually I based off of instructions that you can find on Instagram. I've linked them in the description below if you wanna check out how to build this particular model. And I've also done a full review on the entire Seabound Wave if you wanna see this in more detail. Stepping away from that, let's go on to the next segment of Ninjago mechs. Over here, I've put some of the villain mechs. So right here, you can see some of the villain styled mechs, including some stuff from the Lego Ninjago movie and all the way down to some of the shark themed things, snakes, you've got the ghosts, and even Shen's little anachondrite dinosaur mech right here. And the final thing regarding flying Ninjago and hanging Ninjago stuff are these wall-mounted vehicles here. If we turn the camera all the way over to this side right here, you can see basically all of the land or water-based Lego Ninjago vehicles that I don't have hanging on the ceiling. So right here we have three different versions of the ultrasonic raider as well as the fantastic large hydro bounty you've got the land bounty here ninja dbx as well as i've tried to group these in the different character iterations so we've got a kai section here zane section here lloyd cole jay and so on so really tried to group together the vehicles based on what character they belong to and also over here we've got a ton of villain stuff including some of the latest villain things like the Serpent Wojira here, which I will say was one of the hardest things to wall mount. Had to kind of fiddle around with it to figure out how to even mount that to my wall. And speaking of wall mounted stuff, before we move on from this section, let's take a look at some of the UCS or Master Builder style Lego Star Wars sets. I've mounted these on the wall as well, starting off with the Moss Eisley Cantina right here. You can see different versions of the Moss Eisley Cantina over the years. This is the very first one they released right here with the original Dubak. And then it kind of goes along to stuff like the 2014 version, uh, 2018, and so on, all culminating in this massive version of the large Moss Eisley Cantina set. Of course, we've also got up here the large Betrayal on Cloud City set, which is also one that looks pretty good wall mounted with two different versions of the Twin Pod Cloud Cars up there, the original one and the new one. And you can see just how much Lego has changed from that alone. 
Before we move any further here though, we probably should take a look at some of this stuff mounted on the top of the ceiling. So if we direct our gaze up at the very top here, you can see that the focus has kind of continued over the years of LEGO Space. Of course, we were talking about Futuron and Space Police over there, but over here we've got a ton of Ice Planet stuff. Ice Planet 2002 right here. Behind them we have Mtron at the very top right here. And then we've even got some stuff related to Blacktron, which is one of my favorite LEGO Space sub-themes, which you can see right above me in this particular area here. Blacktron 1 and Blacktron 2. Turning around here, we can take a look at some of the Marvel stuff I've had hanging on the ceilings, including the newest Guardians of the Galaxy ship, or the Benatar, which you can see in the back there. It's almost basically an Ultimate Collector Series ship. You can see just how big it is compared to the original version. And you've got all the other versions of the Milano all the way in the back there as well. Moving on to this area, you can see some of the many Quinjets that have been released for LEGO Marvel, including the largest Avengers Helicarrier, and all the different Quinjet models and another Helicarrier model right there. Also up here, I've displayed some of the Hogwarts Castle buildings. This is the large scale, super big Hogwarts Castle from 2018. When the theme launched, it went off with a bang with this massive display set. And next to it, just to show how much LEGO has changed, I've put alongside the 2001 and 2002 LEGO Harry Potter sets, just so you can see the stark evolution from this to this. I've also included the two different versions of the Basilisk just to show how much LEGO changed as well. 2002 right here, and the 2021 version right here. Turning around here, we can see some more LEGO Space stuff, including Mars Mission all the way in the back here, some of the best Mars Mission stuff. And then moving on backwards, we've got the villain faction from Mars Mission, the aliens right here. But now before we move on, let's now move the camera down a little bit and take a look at what's on the shelves directly below these space stuff. So right here I have kind of an odd assortment of different types of LEGO models. First off right here we have some villain bases in the back there, especially from Agents and Alpha Team, plus some of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles underground sewer layers up at the top. This right here is one of my favorite custom castle models. It was built by a fantastic mockist and designer. And if you want to see a full in-depth review of this custom castle build, also check that out in the description below. Right behind it, you can see the BrickLink AFL designer program, Lowenstein Castle, which is one of the rarest sets from that particular program, and one that I hope will soon be complemented by the Castle in the Forest, which just came out. Moving on down here, we just have a bit of an extra shelf for the Harry Potter chess set here and some other smaller things behind. And then down here, we've got some of the more unique Lego sculptures. This is the Lego Ollie Dragon sculpture. For those who don't know, Ollie the Dragon is a mascot for Legoland. And I've actually recreated the sculpture just by purchasing parts off of bricks and pieces. You can see him right here. His mouth even opens and closes, which is a really fun model to have. It really does feel like this is something you would actually see at a real Legoland and not really an official Lego set, which made the building experience of that really interesting. Now beyond that, we've got some of the other stranger Lego adult oriented sets like the Superstar here, the actual regular size shoe, which is really interesting to see. Some of the special Comic-Con exclusive right here, which were thankfully released online. I do not go to Comic-Cons, but these were released online last year, so super happy to get those. And then moving on down here, we have some more unique builds, including the Toa Terrain Crawler from Bionicle, one of the best Bionicle system sets. And moving on down, we have different versions of both the MTT Droid Carrier, the older version, and the honestly slightly worse newer version, as well as both versions of Jabba Sail Barge, the older version and the slightly worse newer version, which is kind of a funny thing to have them all compared against each other. Moving on to the back here, you can see that this shelf is dedicated purely to Hidden Side. So all you can see right here are some of the smallest builds from LEGO Hidden Side, including the final wave, like the prison build here, featuring the Ninjago arcade pod as a door, plus the graveyard, which is a pretty fantastically detailed tree at the front here. Moving on to this side, I've tried to combine a lot of the different LEGO Avengers and Marvel superheroes small scale buildings. So you've got like the Avengers campus here, a tower in Sokovia, you've got one of the Doctor Strange sets, and as it goes all the way into the back, it's just packed full of Marvel stuff, which is fun to see. 
And finally, I've got a bit of a section dedicated to trolls and Disney princesses, and a little bit of friends too. I don't collect every single one of these, but I do collect ones that I find interesting, and certainly some of the ones back here I did really enjoy building. Moving on up here, we have some of the rarest LEGO sets. These are some of the AFOL designer program sets. So this one right here was one of them. You can see back there is the story of the LEGO group, another AFOL designer program set. And there's a few of them otherwise scattered around this area. I've also included the LEGO Ideas typewriter here, kind of just a temporary location for it until I find a better place to showcase it. Plus the fantastic Spider-Man bridge duel here featuring the only cable car in Lego form that actually fully works and functions. Moving onwards and upwards, we have some more Marvel stuff in the back, some extra spillover Star Wars vehicles like the Corporate Alliance tank droid, some architecture stuff, and different versions of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles shell razor, including even a mini version that came in a pretty obscure poly bag out there. So you can see different versions of it, plus the turtle sub. Now this section right here is one that I'm actually currently in the process of moving stuff around and reshuffling. It's definitely not using the space to the best ability. You can see there's a ton of open space here, but it's kind of just a work in progress area. And temporarily I've showcased the Lego Star Wars free gift with purchase builds right here, which I think make a pretty nice and cohesive display altogether. Moving upwards to the final shelf here, you can see the Lego Elves sets. So Lego Elves had some of the most unique buildings in any Lego theme. I made sure to collect every single one and you can see them all right here, kind of stacked from the shorter stuff up at the front, going all the way back to the tallest stuff all the way in the back. So it's really just a very tightly packed combination of all the Lego Elves buildings, which were some of the best fantasy style buildings Lego's ever done. Back here, of course, we have some of the largest Chima buildings as well. Chima didn't really focus on buildings throughout most of its run, but for the ones that they did, I've tried to group them together, with the Lion Fortress in the back easily being the best one. I also included the Mammoth Stomper at at Walker right there because I felt like it fits in with the rest of the Chima buildings. But now it's time to take a step backwards from these particular shelves and actually start venturing into our main collection here. So once we rotate all around here, let's start to take a look at the massive Lego collection. This is really the main room of my collection. You can see a whole centerpiece for AquaZone right here. And then moving on to this side, I've got whole rows of shelving all the way around, continuing with stuff adorning these ceilings, a ton of stuff to get into. So let's just start off with this area right here. So right here we have a combination of basically almost every single LEGO idea set that fits on this size of shelf. So they're kind of mid to large range idea sets, not the biggest ones, but at least just a few of them that I actually got to manage to display together. So up here we've got stuff like Sesame Street, Flintstones, Tron, we've got the LEGO Friends, Apartments, and Cafe, and even some random other LEGO sets like the LEGO Forma set right here, which was one of the only crowdfunded LEGO builds plus the Everyone is Awesome set, which just released this year. Moving on upwards, we have one of my favorite LEGO Ideas sets ever, which is the Classic Space mech here, the exosuit from Classic Space, just a really fantastically detailed LEGO build, and even some other random free gift with purchases, like this was actually a LEGO Ideas free gift, as well as moving on all the way down here, the Curiosity Rover, which I did actually buy off of bricks and pieces. I was unfortunately not lucky enough to get this during the 30 minutes it was live on Lego Shop at Home and was never sold again after those 30 minutes. So I just had to buy this off of bricks and pieces far cheaper than going to the aftermarket. And moving on upwards to here, we have some more of the adult-oriented Lego sets, like the heads and helmets of varying qualities. Some are definitely better than others, but you can see a whole collection of them here. And moving on, we have some of the droid models from LEGO Star Wars as well, plus some extra stuff from Harry Potter, like these buildable birds with the Hedwig and Fox builds here. This one actually just came out. Moving on from this particular upwards area, let's take a look down here. I have some of the elves' animals, flying machines, boats, and dragons. So elves had a very unique style for their dragons, and it's one that I felt was good to display on the side of the wall, so you can really see the tops of the wings and the impressive wingspan that some of these creatures have. The queen dragon is actually honestly one of the best Lego dragons ever made for an original Lego theme. It's one of the most fantastically built ones, and you can see a whole fleet of dragons all alongside here, plus some other fun vehicles like this airship. You've got the adventure boat here, and then just some other animals along the side here, which all have their very unique and distinctive color scheme. 
Moving on to here, we have a very different theme. Most of the stuff here is from LEGO Exoforce. So Exoforce was one of LEGO's most beloved mech style themes. We really haven't seen anything like it again, unless you count the Ninjago mechs, which are kind of the direct evolution of Exoforce. Now you can see all the different Exoforce sets here. Even the large Sentai Fortress, I had to include the front gate and two towers to really tie the whole display together. Now, of course, the side walls are in a different area, but you can kind of see the point of having all of these mechs all together, which make for a really fun display, having them all showcased. Now there is one thing that's out of place here. That's this Technic car. This is the test car, one of the earliest Technic sets. And there's a reason why it's mounted here because if we move over to this side of the camera right here, you can see some of the Lego Technic cars and the evolution over time. So we've got the supercar here, 8880, one of the most classic Technic cars, moving on to something from around 2006. And we have the modern Technic supercars, which are really fantastically done and really feel like completely separate product lines of their own, which are very fully detailed and work just like real cars work with all of the different internal engine details. Also got the Simpsons house here and an extra shelf for some other stuff, which I'm currently repairing as we speak. Moving on to this section here, we have a large display for Lego Ninjago. So many of these are the Lego Ninjago buildings that we've seen throughout the entire TV series, of course, featuring the Seabound Temple, first and foremost, as one of the most recent builds. But of course, this covers basically everything else as we go throughout the back, including the Dragon Pit from season nine all in the back, Temple of Resurrection from Season 8 right there. We've got the Anachondri Temple from Season 4. Even the Great Devourer's Ouroboros statue from 2012 from Season 1. And this really covers a ton of the years of Ninjago for basically everything that will fit within this height of shelves. And speaking of Ninjago, we'll get back to the other stuff here in a second, but I wanted to highlight the taller Ninjago stuff up here. These are basically everything that was too tall to fit in that segment, so I've put it in its own section here. Like the massive Temple of Irjitsu, you've got the monastery here, and then even the City of Sticks in the back, which barely fits with that top spire bent down. We've even got the Empire Temple of Madness, which is a more recent Ninjago build. And all in all, if you combine this display with the other display we just looked at, that's basically all of the Ninjago stuff you can see as a building form in this display. Moving on to these top parts here, you can see a ton of classic space buildings and bases and rovers up here. So this top shelf is dedicated mostly to earlier phases of classic space. As we get down here, you start to explore some of the other sub-themes like the Blacktron Message Intercept base here and the Blacktron 2 base, which look really great next to each other because they are different evolutions of that same faction. Now in here, I've actually gotten several drawers full of different superhero vehicles. So this one is a really tight display, and at some point I'll probably do something a little bit more unique with these, but basically here you can see all of these superhero side builds and random jets, mechs, planes, cars, motorcycles, you name it. If it was in a superhero set, it's probably gonna be here. And this features pretty much everything they've done throughout the entire superheroes line. I'm not the biggest fan of most of these builds. I really just like collecting superhero stuff for the figures, but some of them are definitely standout sets. Although most of my favorite superhero sets are actually either hanging from the ceiling or have displays of their own. So these are kind of just the spillover stuff, which are just all right, but definitely don't warrant displaying on their own. Moving on down here, we have another section dedicated to some underwater LEGO themes. Right here, you can see some of the AquaZone stuff like the Stingray here. Fantastic build, one of my favorite AquaZone sets. As well as some Insectoid stuff in the back here, one of the other classic space functions. But of course, most of the space here is dedicated to the very unique LEGO Racers road track system. Now this is a really cool setup which actually charges cars when you push them down on the base plate and you can race them around the track by slot cars. I actually did a full video on this if you're interested in checking it out. Again, link that in the description below where I did a full bizarre review on some of the most unique LEGO racer stuff. Moving on down to here, let's pull out both of these at once. This shelf here is dedicated to LEGO Minecraft. As you can see, just some of the many Minecraft sets. I actually have a goal to collect all of the Minecraft sets. These are some of them. I've got more Minecraft stuff scattered in this drawer as well. You can see 
some highlights like the village set right here, as well as a ton of different nether stuff scattered throughout the front. At some point, once I actually own every single Minecraft set, I will be getting out every single one of these to make a large scale Minecraft display and showcase all the sets at once. But for now, we're gonna keep these in these shelves. The final shelf right here is dedicated to the special molded or sometimes brick built Lego animals. So here's every single Lego dinosaur ever made, most of these from the Jurassic Park and Jurassic World lineup, but even featuring some older Lego dinosaurs like this Spinosaurus from Jurassic Park 3, plus some other stranger creatures all around like you've got this transparent blue frozen horse, just a pretty unique mold if I may say so myself, the fantastic new sheep mold which just debuted a couple of days ago at the time of this recording came out on august 1st in the u.s a really nice dual molded little animal here which thankfully you can get from bricks and pieces so you can actually amass a ton of these as i have done got the older style eagle mold alongside the lord of the rings eagle just think it's good to kind of have these two different versions of the lego eagle together one much larger than the other and over here are some of the many pterodactyls all basically the same mold, but all in different color schemes, which is interesting to see. Now, some of the rarest animals here include the impressive Smaug Dragon from the Hobbit series, featuring some of the best wings that any Lego dragon has. These really actually do fully splay out. You can actually fully pose them and move it around. So really cool design here. Plus the Hungarian Horntail from Lego Harry Potter, which actually got a unique mold to itself when it first came out. Moving on down here, we just kind of have some overflow space here for some extra pirate stuff plus a Minecraft set. But over here, we have some more of the largest Minecraft sets ever made, some of the tallest ones there, as well as stuff like the Ocean Temple, which is just a unique design in general. Moving on, we have this final drawer up here. This is dedicated to some more action-adventure Lego stuff. You've got a ton of the Agents trucks here. So these are the two different versions, Agents and Ultra Agents command trucks. Some of the other Ultra Agents vehicles, some more Alpha Team things like the Old Gold base here, and even some Alien Conquest stuff, which you can see right here. Moving on from this stuff, we can start to put our focus up here. I've tried to collect all of the Chinese New Year sets here. So Lego originally was only releasing Chinese New Year stuff in Asia, we didn't actually get them in other parts of the world. Thankfully, I was in Asia when they came out, so I was able to actually get some copies for myself. And because of this whole controversy, LEGO now releases Chinese New Year sets across the whole world. So anyone who wants them can now get them, which is really nice and also features some of the best designed sets that I've seen in any extended line LEGO product. Moving on to over here, we have every single LEGO mech that's made other than Ninjago and Exoforce, which were on the walls over there. You can see a ton of the Marvel stuff, an army of Hulkbusters here, but I'm gonna have to shuffle things around because we're getting three new Hulkbusters by the end of this year alone. And there's probably a lot more coming next year. Over here, we have some of the Batman stuff, some of the smaller Marvel mechs. We have the Colossus of Ultimate Destruction from Lego Nexo Knights. And going all the way back there, you can actually barely see it. I don't know if you can tell, but we've got the Bricklink Eiffel Designer monorail track, which they're all standing upon, which was a completely unique set of its own. You can kind of see the track going through the Spider-Man legs here. If we lift this up, you can see they're standing right on that track element there, the roller coaster piece. Moving the camera back there, you can see the actual bay for the monorail, but it's pretty buried under all of these mechs. Moving on towards the upper section here, we have some of the pirates, bases, and islands. These are actually some of my favorite classic Lego sets ever, especially the Imperial Trading Post. I think that's probably my favorite Lego pirate set. It just paints a really complete picture and scene of a standard trading fort, as well as the Imperial Fortress in the back there, all just some classic Lego Spanish architecture styled Lego sets. Of course, in the front, we have some Islander stuff and just some extra Marvel stuff that's spilled over, like the Shang-Chi dragon, which can be seen right here. Moving on upwards, we have some more original Lego castle stuff, including what's probably one of my favorite Lego idea sets, the Medieval Blacksmith, next to the original Lego Blacksmith that came out several years prior. So it's kind of cool to have them displayed next to each other. I've also got the Viking Fortress here, the Nightmare Castle from Monster Fighters, and you can see going all the way up there, you can see even the Batlord Castle and all sorts of different unique Lego builds. The only thing out of place here, but honestly, that kind of fits in pretty well, is the Darth Vader Castle from Star Wars all the way in the back there. I honestly just thought it fit the aesthetic of all these other medieval-styled Lego castles, so I just displayed it alongside the rest. 
Moving backwards here, we can take a look at some of the stuff I have hanging up above me. You can see some of the LEGO aviation builds. So I've kind of tried to display different styles of aviation over time. Stuff like the Red Baron, which you can see up here, one of the only triple winged biplanes LEGO's done, the standard SOP with Camel, as well as a ton of different LEGO spaceships from the NASA line all the way up above including the most recent NASA Space Shuttle Discovery, which is probably the best one they've ever done, and the best one they're gonna do in a long time. Going on to this section over here, we have even more LEGO Castle and miscellaneous just tall things. Uh, tall crane here, you've got the Saturn V all the way in the back, Tower of Orthanc, Haunted House, even the Ninjago Temple, the Garmadon's family temple right there and then just some spillover mechs which I just didn't fit in the other mech display. This section now down here is fully dedicated to LEGO Batman. So you can see basically every iteration of the LEGO Batcave that's ever been made, including the original one from the 2006 era of Batman, plus some of the more recent stuff like the 1966 version of the classic TV Batman. Now down here we have what was the largest LEGO set ever, but has now been displaced by an even larger one. This was, at the time of December 2020, the largest LEGO set, the Colosseum right here. And I just put the Fortrex in there because I didn't really have anywhere else to put it, and it fit perfectly. Now finally down here we just have some other miscellaneous LEGO stuff. One of the rarest LEGO sets in this section is the Grand Carousel, which is a fully motorized working LEGO carousel which was released several years ago and is one of the most interesting fully functional LEGO sets. Moving on to this section over here, I've got a full drawer dedicated to other LEGO space shuttles and space related objects that unfortunately did not make the cut for being hung from the ceiling. Just because there are just so many of them, I had to pick which ones I wanted to showcase. Now this right here is a very interesting Curiosity Rover. This was introduced for the LEGO Discovery line back in the day, and it has all sorts of different unique functions. It actually fully folds up, you can steer it, all of these fold up and whatnot. So it's a really interesting LEGO build and not something LEGO would probably ever Ever do again today. This shelf right here showcases every single Lego Mario set. So I actually am actually still building the newest Mario stuff that just released August 1st. So this is just stuff that released before August 1st. I'll have the August 1st stuff in here at some point. But you can see pretty much every single one that they've released, including the Comic Con exclusive, which you can see right here, all laid out in one display. And again, once I actually have all the Mario sets built, I'll probably be making a video putting all of these together in one massive track to play with. Over here, we have an entire shelf dedicated to LEGO Nexo Knights. So right here, we have every single LEGO Nexo Knight set ever released, some hero stuff in the back, villain stuff on top, and featuring some pretty unique color schemes. You've got the lava monsters, the lightning monsters, the computer program virus monsters, as well as just some of the hero vehicles, which are pretty mixed. Some of them are really good and some of them are just okay, which is why they're just kind of hidden on this shelf here. Now up here is an entire section dedicated to Lego trains, plus Lego hid inside because I just had to find a place for them anyways. So underneath this plane here, you can see pretty much a lot of the older style Lego trains. Some of the rarest ones in my collection include this very classic Santa Fe engine. We've got some of the older vintage style train stuff right here. And these all continue onwards, even the Hogwarts Expresses all stacked together, plus the hidden side vehicles. So these are all the hidden side vehicles that came out, which were actually pretty unique and inventive for what they were. This shelf right here is dedicated to every single LEGO Legends of Chima set that I could fit on this shelf. So this was a really unique way to get tons of animal themed LEGO builds, and each of them was a pretty unique build to itself. So we've got some wolf stuff, rhino stuff, eagles, polar bears, you name it, every single Chima vehicle is basically featured in this whole drawer right here. Up here we have some of the classic Lego castle stuff. This is the original Lego Yellow Castle set number 375, which started it all. It's really interesting to see these stickers in actually fairly decent condition for a set this old, and I've even got all the knights displayed as they should be for this particular set. Of course, moving on, we have some more modern castle stuff like Fantasy Era and some older stuff like Forest Men right here and some of the Royal Knight stuff all the way in the back. 
Now the castles continue here because right here we've got another display for Lego Castle. These are some of the larger Lego castles Lego ever put out. So you can see some stuff from the Ninja line like this tower drawbridge here and even stuff from Nexo Knights with this Nexo Knights thing, fantasy era skull castle. Going all the way around to the back, you can see some Knights Kingdoms era stuff. Really just all the large scale Lego castles that I didn't showcase earlier are basically featured in this one display. We can take some time looking at all the stuff in the back before we move on to the final shelf here. Right up here we have every single Lego Monkey Kid set. So this is the basically complete collection of all of the Monkey Kid stuff. Eventually once the theme is complete I'll probably have a completely separate section to showcase them on their own because there are some fantastic builds here. Now these are honestly some of the best Lego sets that they've made for an original theme pretty much ever. It almost feels like a Lego movie's worth of budget went into these. Just some really fantastically detailed both play sets and models. Almost every single one of them is truly fantastic. And this one that just released is really awesome because these pieces all glow in the dark. So this Bone Demon mech here is a fully glow in the dark build which looks fantastic in the dark. Stepping on backwards here, you can see a whole flying section up at the top here dedicated to the Lego Movie. I've also got the Lego Movie Flying Fortress there, which I guess made sense kind of displayed hanging from the ceiling. But these are also all of the other flying styled Lego Movie stuff, including one of the coolest Lego Movie vehicles, which was this large fist shaped spaceship right here. Moving on, also speaking of stuff on the top there, you can see both versions of the Taj Mahal, the one from Architecture and the older one from a couple of years back. We have a custom Lego Monastery of Spinjitzu for Ninjago in the back there. This was actually a custom build that I made myself. You can kind of see it from this angle all the way at the top there. I tried to match it to the TV show in particular. And then moving onwards to this section over here, just some other random builds, another custom build of mine, which was this Cloud Kingdom Sanctuary, all the way at the top right there. And then one of my favorite Lego sets ever, the monorail. So this is the Futuron and Unitron monorails kind of connected in one display, and it's just a really fantastic build overall. I've also got some of the Mars Mission stuff here because I just didn't really have anywhere else to put them. And finally, we can try to move our focus down to these last shelves on this side of the wall here, now most of the stuff is just regular city stuff. So these are just regular city vehicles that I've collected over time. Just some miscellaneous things here. You occasionally get some racer stuff, but most of this is just Lego city. We have another shelf dedicated to just city stuff packed in, basically using all available space to fit in as many city vehicles as I could in this one shelf. And down here, city continues because here are more of these standard LEGO City stuff, plus some random LEGO Technic vehicles and cars here and there. Now this shelf right here is dedicated to some underground and racing LEGO themes. So here we've got Power Miners, we've got Rock Raiders, which was the original version of the underground LEGO stuff, and then all the way over here we have some of the World Racer things, as well as just some other Racers LEGO vehicles, just because they managed to fit in the space okay. And finally, this shelf here is dedicated to some of the smaller creator expert styled LEGO cars. Now, what's really interesting is that LEGO is actually re-releasing some of these sets. This one in particular is being re-released in a blue color. It's one of the first times LEGO is just straight up re-releasing an older LEGO set in a completely different color scheme. So I definitely will have to get that to display them next to each other here. But as you can see right here, some of the many LEGO Creator Expert cars, especially like this James Bond one, which I never thought would be created as an actual LEGO set. Now I've also managed to include some of the oldest LEGO products here. These are a scale that LEGO was playing around with for kid style bricks, so I had to get these to add to my collection, just pretty unique things in general to own. Right here we have an original LEGO fairy set, which was honestly far before they even were doing minifigures type stuff. Just a pretty unique design and also including a full on older family style set, which was one of the original ways before they had minifigures whatsoever. Down here we have some of the oldest Technic stuff. Now right here is even some of the original boxes of some stuff just when they were experimenting with what minifigures could be. Really cool to get this box in such good condition. It's almost like a cigarette style box opens up like so, you pour the bricks out. And you can see that set right here, the little cowboys hanging out on the side of the ferry right there. 
And speaking of the Creator Expert cars, let's now shift our focus very quickly over here to just look at some of the final ones. Now, these are just some of the ones that I could not fit in that display. So you can see the Ghostbusters Ecto-1, which actually has full features, a really cool build here. Plus the London bus, a classic build, and the motorcycle here, just stuff that were too tall for the shelves. But now, let's move on to some of the other parts of the LEGO collection with this side fully summed up. All right, let's continue the tour taking a look at this section here. We've got the Manchester United Stadium. Now there actually are rumors LEGO will be doing another stadium set for potentially a different sport or a different location. So we'll see if those rumors turn out to be true later this year, but maybe I'll have to expand this collection soon. Moving on upwards, we have some of the extra brick heads and brick sketches. Right here is my army of Black Falcon minifigures using the newest LEGO Ideas Blacksmith Black Falcon figures, which I thought was a really fun way to build up an army. These ones are all using the newest style of Lego horse as well, which was introduced in that set. So it's nice to get that off of bricks and pieces. Moving on upwards, we have just some more Lego brick heads right here. This shelf here is dedicated to every single Lego dimension set, although some of the figures are actually already on the walls. So that's why some of these are empty because I just had the figures on the separate walls. Moving up here is every single build from the dimension sets, honestly just kind of crammed together on the shelves to make space. And all the way up here, we have all of the Lego brick heads. Now, one of the most unique ones from this display is the one on the top shelf here. I used the Go Brick Me set to actually build a version of myself and the duck mascot for duck bricks right here to stand next to each other. Now, zooming out here, we can take a look on the shelf above that. Now, this is basically every single pirate ship that's ever been created for LEGO. If you do want an in-depth look at all of the LEGO pirate ships, I did publish a video showcasing my entire pirate ship collection. So definitely, again, check that out in the description if you want to see a showcase of all the LEGO pirate ships. But for now, let's just go up and take a look at them very, very briefly as we pan the camera alongside this entire section. All right, so starting off with these shelves here, we have some of the Ninjago City stuff. So Ninjago City docks is all the way up there. You can see that whole display. And then going on to over here, we have the original Ninjago City from 2017, combined with the Ninjago City garden set from this year in 2021. I've also included this Chinese New Year build here because I felt like it really did fit in well with the Ninjago City stuff, especially when displayed next to the Zane Memorial from Ninjago City Gardens, which just came out this year. Now, there are some other larger direct-to-consumer sets here, including the Stranger Things house, the Daily Bugle Tower up there, the newest Frozen Ice Castle, which just released this year, some of the Avengers Tower stuff that I've just kind of managed to slip into here because I'll be putting something else here once those get moved, the Pirates of Barracuda Bay Lego Idea set, and two of the Disney-style direct-to-consumer sets, the Disney Castle and the Disney Train and Station, particularly the station here because the train was with the other stuff. Before we move on from this section, let's take a step back and look at some of these stuff right here. So these figures are the LEGO Star Wars CCBS buildable figures. Unfortunately, did not last too, too long, but while we had the line, you can see a ton of different builds here, a very different style from the standard construction or Bionicle builds. So I had to keep them in their own separate area. We've got some of the villains on this side and some of the heroes on this shelf right here. We've even got a shelf for some of the larger stuff up at the top right here, including two different versions of Darth Vader. Continuing with the theme of strange random construction styled stuff, right here we have the Chima Ultra builds. So I've also actually included all of the combo models plus the standard sets. Some of the combo models I found to be really cool and interesting, like this large panther with a flaming mohawk. I just thought that was a really cool design to have as a combo model. So. I managed to get all the regular sets plus the combo models here. And finally down here we have some of the Knight's Kingdom stuff. So another construction or buildable action figure line, which I've managed to kind of fit all on this shelf right here. Moving on outwards though, we can take a look at some of the stuff I have on these shelves here. So up here are some of the Lego Technic sets, especially some of the largest Technic sets ever. I don't collect every single one, but I do collect the larger ones that interest me, like this remote controlled vehicle here. The reskin of that same vehicle as a limited edition set all the way back in around 2014, if I recall correctly. 
This right here is one of the largest motorized Lego Technic sets. It's a full on excavator and shoveling machine that you can really fully control from a phone app. So that's a really cool build right here. And then moving on down here, we have just some more motorized and remote control Technic builds. This race car in particular came out just last year and is really fun to play around with. Now down here, we just have some extra train stations, just some random stuff here. These bins are all full of just random Lego pieces, so no need to spend too much time there. And over here, I've got some of the Marvel buildings that didn't fit on the lower shelving, as well as just some of the Winter Village stuff. As we move upwards from here, you can see some of the latest Winter Village items. Going all the way up, as we continue here, this is basically all Winter Village stuff, and all of these are usually taken out for Christmas time for full displays. If you want to see my Christmas Winter Village, I've also made a full display and presentation of that and link that in the description below where I made a full on Winter Village for the Christmas 2020 year. But now we can move on to take a look at some of these other shelves right here. Some of the Lego Insectoids and Galaxy Squad animals here. I really wanted to put the insect-like stuff together for space, so I just felt like those really worked out well together as a whole sub-theme, despite being many years apart. Down here we have some of the Bionicle system sets, so the uh, Viserac Gate here, Tower of Toa back there, even the Paraka Stronghold here, so a lot of the system Bionicle stuff. And then down here for these two shelves, we have a, a special section dedicated to some of the stuff like Lego Adventures, Indiana Jones, as well as just some of the desert and Egyptian architecture, which we can see throughout these shelving right here. Some original Lego themes continue with the Monster Fighters and Haunted stuff here. Some nice Lego side street buildings on this particular display, including one of the original Lego town streetscapes, which was a pretty cool one because they had some sort of a renaissance or vintage fair, so you can see some of the castle-inspired stuff here too. And then just some random Lego movie builds. So these are all the different random stuff created for the Lego movie sets, particularly many things from the Lego Movie 2, like this three-wheeled vehicle right here. Moving on to this section here are all of the Galaxy Squad vehicles. You can see the rovers plus the spaceships here. Down here are some of the more unique Lego items like the employee gift set, which are featuring the bird's employee gift, as well as just some vintage city stuff and an older Lego style train. And moving on down here, we have some of the taller hidden side buildings that just didn't fit in the standard display plus my little army of 500 first clone troopers down here facing off against an army of droids, plus some of the MTTs as well. And finally, down at the bottom here, we have even more MTTs, plus some other Confederate-style walkers and other villainous factions of LEGO Star Wars blasters like these cannons here. All right, turning around, before we move on to the back of the section here, let's take a look at this right here. Now this is the centerpiece of my Lego collection. It is a massive underwater Lego Aquazone style base. It's a really cool set that's actually based off of an original Lego Aquazone set that came out a couple years back in 1980s. You can see if we come all the way up here, this right here is the Neptune Discovery Lab. It's from the original Aquazone line of sets. I've also included some other standard uh, interesting promotional figures on the front here, but this right here is just the main set. And then as we move on to right here, we've got the massive Neptune Discovery base. It is basically a fully scaled up version of that. I've added my own special touches like different sea monsters swimming throughout. We've got a massive CCBS style of the Nui Jaga up there. All sorts of craziness going on here, and this monorail actually fully works. So this monorail actually goes all the way around the track, and it's a fully detailed working build as well. Going on around here, we have some of my LEGO Space Armies. We've got an army of Blacktron figures up here, especially using that new Galactic Bounty Hunter figure from 2019, a fantastic collectible minifigure, plus a classic Space Army right there with many different orange spacemen, which I was very lucky to get off of Bricks and Pieces. Going on over here, we have the massive Lego Eiffel Tower build. This is one of the largest Lego builds ever. It's a really fantastic and impressively detailed building. And out right down at the bottom here, we have some other just random Lego stuff, particularly from Lego architecture, as well as just some random Star Wars armies that I built from different battle packs throughout the years. Now over here, we have two different versions of the Lego Ferris wheel. This one right here was from the original creator line. 
This one was from Creator Expert a few years back, and I'm actually gonna have to expand this display because I just got a new Creator Ferris wheel on August 1st. I'm in the process of building it, and it'll probably have to go somewhere around here. I'll have to figure it out. Now over here on this side, we have the General Grievous Ultimate Collector Series statue, one of the most unique Ultimate Collector Series LEGO Star Wars builds yet. And speaking of unique UCS stuff, this right here is the Darth Maul bust. It is a really interesting build for a Lego set, and it actually features all bricks that I purchased off of bricks and pieces to keep the cost down. Moving on here, we have some more architecture stuff and some of the 18 plus Lego adult line things like the flowers here, plus the Lego house exclusives. So we've got the tree of creativity here, plus the architecture Lego house build right there. And all these drawers are basically just Lego bricks as well. So nothing too crazy to see here, just packed to the brim with Lego pieces, just random Lego stuff for building. I am actually in the process of sorting all of these, so I do not have all these fully sorted yet. At some point, I really hope that I will because it is very difficult to find the right pieces I'm looking for when the pieces are kind of in this whole scattered state. You can see right here, I've kind of started to sort things like all the slopes here, transparent stuff here, and miscellaneous things but it's definitely a slow process because every single one of the drawers that you see here are basically packed full with lego bricks and these are all the base plates as well so lots and lots of stuff this one right here is actually kind of a funny display it's just all the ucs stands because i hang all my ucs vehicles so these are all the stands to stuff i just kind of throw them in the shelf I'm not really sure what to do with them and moving on around here you can actually take a look at some of the most organized parts of my collection, which are the minifigure stuff right here. You can see I've actually had a full collection of the minifigure heads, torsos, legs, collectible minifigure stuff, things that go around their neck and legs, uh, hair right here because helmets are a different section, some Star Wars stuff, and some more Star Wars minifigures in the back. So that's pretty well organized, and we just have more and more and more parts in all these shelves right here just a ton and ton of lego stuff so definitely never i'm at a lack for parts but it will take me a long long time to find stuff because there's just way too many things just in disarray here so hopefully one of these days i'll be able to actually sort all of this because it's kind of hard to get around right now i've also displayed up here the now largest Lego set ever. This is the full map of the world. It was a very large model to build, took a ton of time, but looks really great. And right now, this is the largest Lego set ever, but I'm sure Lego will top it at some point in the near future. Moving on though, let's take a look all the way over to this side. Coming around, we can see over here a first display of some of the other Lego Star Wars UCS stuff like the Yoda sculpture, next to the more modern version of Yoda here, plus the UCS ATST build, which we can see right here, some of the taller custom LEGO Star Wars stuff. Up here is the large Minecraft D2C, the Mountain Cave, Ghostbusters Firehouse Headquarters, and up here finally we have some of the LEGO Harry Potter Hogwarts stuff, especially from the latest line, plus the Jurassic Park gate kind of looming above them. Before we move on from this side of the room, I do want to point out the new eight stud wide LEGO Speed Champions cars. From the bottom to the top, these are some of the many eight stud wide Speed Champion stuff. This is actually every single one they've produced since around last year when they first came out with this new building system for Speed Champions. I love just how detailed they are, especially for smaller sets and how, how much detail they're able to even fit into cars of this scale. To me, this is basically the perfect scale for LEGO cars, which is why I am such a big fan of those builds. But moving on, let's take a look at some of the shelves over on this side. I'm gonna come around here and showcase some of the stuff we have here. So right here, we have from the top to the bottom, a full column of Lego Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. These are every single Lego Lord of the Rings and Hobbit build that fits on these shelves. Moving all the way up here, you can see one of my favorite builds right there with the full Helm's Deep castle in the background right there. Moving on here, we have some themes continuing. We have some Western stuff right here with the original Fort Lego Rado in the back there, the original Lego Western Fort. Down here, we even have some Lone Ranger stuff, which fits perfectly with the Western sub-theme. And going on down from now, we have some of the underwater stuff. So Atlantis on this shelf, Aqua Raiders, plus some of the other older Aqua Raider stuff and Aqua Zone, all featured together in this whole display right here. Moving on back to the top here, 
we have some Lego Star Wars buildings. So right here is our Endor focus and kind of an Empire Strikes Back theme as well with this whole building right here of Cloud City. We've got a Hoth focus here. I've basically crammed every single Hoth set into one shelving area right here, including the Master Builder Hoth playset or UCS Hoth that they did. And then over here we have the many different clone turbo tanks that LEGO's created over the years, including the original one right here, the Clone Wars version, the newest version, and even the Micro Fighters version right there. Now moving on to these shelves here, you'll notice a bit of a theme, and that theme is dinosaurs. Here's every single LEGO Jurassic World set, plus a Dino Attack set, and the Dino sets from around 2011 are also featured right here. Moving on down though, we have some of the LEGO Spy stuff. So here are most of the Alpha Team and Agent sets. And then over here we have Ultra Agents. And we even have some LEGO Movie Secret Police stuff here, which I just felt kind of fit the same vibe as Agents. And finally, as we move on down here, a section devoted entirely to just Castle Siege engines. So these are all kind of vehicles of war. Over here we have some of the LEGO Amusement Park stuff, so mostly Legoland stuff, but also just some random amusement park stuff like stuff they did for Unikitty. We've got Time Cruisers over here, one of the wackiest LEGO themes with very interesting designs. And some more amusement park stuff down here with a combination of LEGO Friends and Legoland, plus some miscellaneous stuff here with LEGO Dots, as well as just some Spongebob stuff, and finally just some more LEGO Movie stuff, plus some more amusement parks with water park things there. And finally, as we go to the top here, you can see the different versions of the UCS R2-D2, the original 2012 version and the newest one which came out this year. And we have all the roller coasters here too. So this is the Creator Pirate Roller Coaster. In the far back, you can see the Joker Manor which featured a roller coaster of its own. You can kind of see the track wrap all the way around that. And then here we have the actual large scale Lego roller coaster right here. So this is a Really, really fun build. Oh, it's gonna get stuck there. But this is a really great roller coaster, fully functioning, one of the best sets Lego's put out, and I really hope they put out another roller coaster at some point. And finally, we can now move on to the last area of shelving in this collection. If you have followed my channel for some time, you have probably seen this quite a lot. This is the entire 100% complete Lego Bionicle collection. And I'm going to breeze right through this because I just put out a video on Bionicle Day, August 10th, that showcased every single set in great detail. So here you can see them very quickly from the 2001 to 2003 era, 2004 to 2005, 06 and 07, 2008, 2009, and all the combiner models here, and finally Generation 2 down here with 2015 and 2016. The models continue all the way down here, another shelf full of combo models, we've got the uh, Pearl Gold Kanohi Ignika I was talking about, I actually have it placed on Mata Nui right now, as well as the larger scale 08 and 09 sets, Titans from 06 and 07, Titans from 04 and 05, and 2001 to 2003 stuff here. And we've even got all the villain featured sets all alongside here, continuing on downwards all the way to 2010 with Bionicle Stars, different combo models right here, and finally, some more experiments LEGO did with construction including the precursor to Bionicle with the Throwbots and Robo Riders here, and Slizers as well. We've got Galador over here, and all the Hero Factory stuff. So the final few shelves here are dedicated entirely to Hero Factory. We've got the original wave of heroes right here, continuing on to some villains here. The villains continue on to here. Finally, just some final Invasion from Below villains, plus some of the LEGO Ben 10 stuff, superhero stuff, and other construction experiments. And don't forget, because the shelving here is intended to display all of the different canonized, fan-created Bionicle models over time. You can see some of my favorites like Makuta Miserix here, and some of my ultimate favorites up at the top shelf here with the melding version of the Makuta Teradax figure. It was actually from the Multiversal Adventures that actually depicted a what-if scenario if Makuta Teradax was a hero instead of a villain. He crossed over from his dimension to our main dimension, one of the coolest characters and builds that you can see right there, plus Artaka and Karzani here, the two titans of the Bionicle universe, plus the first Toa ever, Toa Helrix. All the way on the top you can even see some of other members of the canonized fan-created Bionicle models, like the Dark Hunter organization up at the very top right there. But with that, we've basically taken a look at everything on the shelves, but there's still a major component we haven't talked about because there's a ton of stuff hanging from the ceiling. 
So let's come on out all the way over here and take it from the top to see all the stuff around the ceiling in this collection. Now, the main focus here has been split between Star Wars and Ninjago. So every single Ninjago set that flies or belongs in the air is in the air. And every single Star Wars set that flies or spaceship is the same. So let's start with Ninjago and go from there. All the way over here, we have the pilot seasons. So season zero are the pilots. Also featured in season one, we have the dragons over here. Moving on though, we have some of the stuff from season seven, Hands of Time right here. Not too many flying vehicles, but just enough like the Destiny Shadow, the Fusion Dragon, and the Dawn of Iron Doom over there. And right here we have some items dedicated specifically to Prime Empire and Season 11. So 11 and 12, Secrets of the Forbidden Spinjitsu stuff with Zane's helicopter, plus the Prime Empire dragons and vehicles when they went into the video game world. And over here, we have some of the fantastic LEGO Ninjago movie builds, like Lloyd's Dragon, right here, one of my favorite robotic dragons LEGO's done, plus the very inventive Jay's vehicle or lightning jet right here. Up over here, we have Season 3, Ninjago Rebooted, featuring the regular and legacy version of Kai's fire jet, plus the Nindroid mech dragon and Zane's ninja copter right there. Now this large display right here is dedicated to Season 5 Possession, so it features the Maro Dragon facing off against the final flight of the Destiny's Bounty, as well as some of the many other possession-styled stuff. I've even hung up the new 2021 Legacy Destiny's final flight right there because they actually are supposed to be technically the same craft. So you can see that hanging alongside the original. So original right here and the Junior's version of the Legacy set right here, which actually floats on water. Over here we have a section dedicated to Season 13, Master of the Mountain, with the great skeleton bone dragon here facing off against Wu's battle dragon over here. Up here are just some of the Lego Bionicle stuff, the flying craft from Bionicle, specifically the 2008 flying vehicles. And moving on from that, as we come over to this side, we have a large section dedicated to just other miscellaneous Ninjago items. So we've got many different versions of the Destiny's Bounty flying boat here, the large Destiny's Bounty from the Ninjago movie, the legacy version of the original Destiny's Bounty. You can also see the original 2012 Destiny's Bounty all the way up there, so it's good to have these kind of featured at least close to each other. And just some stuff from all the other seasons featured throughout, like season four, we've got some of the island stuff, Nia's Water Dragon from Seabound, as well as just some stuff as we move over here from the Ninjago Skybound wave, featuring Misfortune's Keep and even stuff like Jay's Electric Dragon, which was a hybrid for him and Nia. But with that, we've basically taken a look at all of the Ninjago stuff that we have hanging from the ceiling, and now it's time to take a look at the final thing to discuss, the LEGO Star Wars items hanging from the ceiling. And oh boy, there's a lot of them. So let's move on over here. We can see some of the many different LEGO X-Wing sets. Now this is not every single one, but it's almost all of them. And it's the ones that matter in my opinion. We've got the Christmas X-Wing employee gift right here alongside the newest LEGO smaller scale X-Wing. The many different resistance ones, all the way continuing in a row. Even both Ultimate Collector Series versions of the X-Wing can be seen. You can see the original UCS X-Wing, which was one of the very first UCS sets and then right next to it, you can see the newer version of the UCS X-Wing, the Red 5 X-Wing Starfighter, which was from around 2013 right here. Moving on, we have a full collection of the Resistance and Rebels fleet. So going up above, we have multiple different Y-Wings scattered all throughout, even the Ghost from the Rebels TV show. And up above, we even have the UCS Naboo Starfighter fully done in Chrome, plus a few custom ones. And it all continues all the way around with different themes kind of grouped together in different spaces here. At this point, I'll just take the camera and do a quick fly through of every single different ship as we go around. We have Imperial shuttles right here, plus different versions of the Slave One, many different TIE fighters, including a vehicle carrying TIE fighters, plus the UCS TIE interceptor over here. We've got different Star Destroyers as we move around here, stuff belonging to the First Order with the two different versions of Kylo Ren shuttle plus the First Order transport. Again, Y-Wings and A-Wings. You can see a chain of A-Wings at the very top there, basically every single one they've done. Moving over here, we have some more of the Republic-style stuff like the ARC-170 Starfighters facing off against the Separatist vehicles 
And then as we move on here, we have even some more stuff like snow speeders flying up above in the sky, plus some stuff from Rogue One, some of the massive LEGO Ultimate Collector Series Star Destroyers. This is the newest one from 2019, you can see right here. And then we have the Super Star Destroyer from 2011, one of the longest Star Wars vehicles ever created. And all the way in the back there, we have the original 2002 Star Destroyer build, which is actually a really fantastic build even to this day. Now, of course, moving on from that, we have many different versions of the Jedi shuttles and even some custom builds here, too. This right here is a custom build for the Hammerhead Corvette. Lego's never done a model of this UCS or otherwise, so I had to get a massive version off of Rebrickable. And we also have a UCS styled version of the Razor Crest, which I purchased instructions for next to the official set version of the Razor Crest up there. Now, over here, we have a custom version of the Republic dropship, which actually does carry that custom ATT, which we looked at earlier, plus the original Lego set version of the dropship and ATOT Walker, which can be seen right there. And I had to sneak in the Galador TDN egg module just because I felt it would be funny alongside all these massive Star Wars vehicles. Now there's actually a few more Star Destroyers here. This is a custom Imperial Interdictor Gravity Well Star Destroyer, which was seen in Star Wars Rebels, but was also seen in some of the non-canon Legends games. Plus some of the official LEGO Star Destroyer sets up at the top there, and even some nods to the Old Republic, with Darth Malgus' Starfighter right there. Plus the Clone Wars, with Anakin's Twilight Ship. Moving on around here, we have the large-scale Death Star right here, the Death Star 2, a fantastic and unique LEGO build right alongside the playscale style Death Star, which I somehow managed to hang from the ceiling. Moving on, as we continue all the way over here, you can see different versions of the B-Wing. This right here is the Ultimate Collector Series B-Wing. And we've also got a mock from Rebrickable of the same model, plus more TIE Fighters, and even the Tantive IV right here. So all sorts of different models. These right here are custom versions of the Anakin Jedi Interceptor and Obi-Wan Jedi Interceptor builds. These are again from Rebrickable and some of the best and fully detailed Jedi Starfighters that I've seen so far. And finally, one last thing on the shelves we need to talk about are all of the modular buildings you can see up on the top shelf here fully dedicated to the modular lego buildings kind of spills over to this side of stuff right here as well plus some other stuff like the ole kirk christensen house which was a very unique lego employee gift i did not actually own the original model from this this is a recreation from bricks and pieces and i just purchased some custom stickers to really go alongside it because i have actually visited that exact location in person before all right, and with that, we've summed up a full tour of this massive LEGO collection. It is one of the largest collections in the world, and I'm really happy to be able to actually share this with all of you. In fact, according to Brickset, this is actually one of the 14th or 12th largest collections, depending on when you see stuff and when I actually update the field there. So it's really a truly massive investment in bricks and plastic, and I'm really happy to actually be able to showcase all of the different sets here. I've tried to make this as engaging of a space as possible with stuff flying all around the ceiling and tried to also organize it as best I can. Although of course, I don't have all the space in the world so there are some things that do need a little bit of improvement and hopefully this will continue to be a growing space. As we go up here to the exit of the collection, be sure to let me know down in the comments below, which ones are your favorite stuff that you saw throughout this video? Do you have some favorite themes, favorite sets, or even favorite minifigures that you saw? It could be even some Bionicle Kanohi masks. For all I know, let me know. And also, I hope you enjoyed this video. Definitely stay tuned to Duck Bricks for even more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming your way very soon. Thank you so much, and I hope you enjoyed this tour. Bye-bye for now, and here's to another year of Duck Bricks.